The People's Hospital I wanted a place of refuge for the community. It was something I had to do, seeing my countrymen suffer from loathsome diseases on the streets was heart-wrenching. At that time, there was no hospital for the poor or non-whites. I was glad I could help when the governor approached me. This was how the hospital began. I am Tan Tok Seng. I came to Singapore from Malacca when I was 21 years old. I started out selling vegetables and chickens. So they brought the food and uh, items down to Singapore to supply the growing population of Singapore. I think he uh, did well in his uh, food supply business. Uh, gradually, he started a shop along the Singapore River. Tan Tok Seng had a very big heart for the poor and needy. He is indeed a role model for us to emulate. Seeing how the sick crowd the streets begging for help, I felt compelled to establish a place where people could get relief. This was how the hospital for the sick poor on Pearls Hill was built. It was called the Chinese Popper Hospital. But it was for all races, regardless. The early years were not easy. There was overcrowding. Hygiene was poor. Needs were plentiful and resources few. In spite of the difficult times, the people and hospital staff pulled together and worked hard to make strides in medical care. At the same time, this hospital had focused on training generations of doctors from Singapore and Malaya. Another early medical milestone was in 1937 when patients afflicted with beriberi were treated. Dr. Ernest Stephen Montero successfully researched and administered the groundbreaking treatment that saved the lives of thousands of people. This medical accomplishment gained global prominence for Singapore. Then came World War II. The Japanese took over the premises as their medical hospital. During those rough days, the hospital was called the Universal Love Hospital, serving the general public. At a time when there was grave shortage of food and medicine, hospital staff managed the limited drugs available economically through careful nursing. In return, patients and their families showed gratitude by donating food like eggs and rice to the doctors and hospital staff. Though times were tough, nothing seemed too difficult to overcome when the community came together. In August 1945, Dr. Benjamin Chu successfully administered the first penicillin injection to treat a serious lung infection on his colleague. Penicillin was obtained from the POW camp in Syme Road through airdrop. Also in 1945, Tan Tok Seng Hospital became the designated centre for TB treatment. The Rotary Clinic was established. The building was funded by the Rotary Club it was also the Centre for TB Research and Treatment, led by Professor Chu Chin Hin and his team of physicians. They introduced a revolutionary breakthrough for TB treatment from the 60s to the 80s. Their six months regimen has been adopted globally, even till today. Patient morale and well being got a boost. The expatriate wives of British servicemen formed the Diversional Therapy Unit to raise the spirits of long-staying TB patients. Today, more than 60 years later, 
this volunteer group continues to be a source of comfort for our patients. You just have to listen. You just give them a listening ear. But if you can console them, you can make them happy. But usually we bring uh, simple craft work just to lift them up. Medical care at Tan Tok Seng Hospital is more than just medicine. To this day, the hospital has the largest group of volunteers. I've been given many accolades in my lifetime. I came with little and made Singapore home for over 30 years. I am thankful I could give back to the land and the community that blessed me so richly in meaningful ways. What is more remarkable is how Tan Tok Seng Hospital has far surpassed its humble beginnings. But to this day, it remains the People's Hospital for Singapore.